wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Welcome everybody, I'm Dr. Nicole Lindsay. And I'm Dr. Brian Jeanette. And we are at Back in Balance and we're here today coming to you live to talk about sunscreen. The Suns bottom tan line on yeah. how to make natural sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. um, through, through the course of this live video, we're going to show you the, the ingredients that we use to make sunscreen. Um, we're going to show you how to make the sunscreen. Um, and we're also going to cover some do's and don'ts of sunscreen and the importance of sunscreen and the things to look for when you go and buy sunscreen in the store. Yeah, exactly. So you have a brand new baby. I do. That has fresh fresh skin. skin. He is so fresh that we're actually not supposed to put sunscreen on him that he's so new because right. he's so new. Yes. So the thought of taking your baby out in the sun, you know, it's summertime now, the sun's out. You want to maybe put him in the baby pool for the first time and have him experience that. But you know, it's 80 degrees out. The sun is going to be blasting down on his brand new skin. So we want to put something to protect him, you know, mm -hmm. on his skin. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a true story for you. This um, actually... Yeah, this, this story that Dr. Cole's about to tell is actually um, pretty recent. This past uh, couple weeks, uh, the woman down in Florida. Yeah, and she, it was hot, and started taking her child out more swimming. And, of course, what do you do when your child goes outside? Uh, the first thing you do is lather them up in sunscreen to protect them. And Especially Florida, that sun is so brutal. Brutal, brutal. and you, you, you think you're doing the right thing, you're protecting their baby, your baby's skin, and uh, so she did this, and all of a sudden she started noticing that her baby was having these episodes where the baby would drop its head and it would just be unresponsive and just kind of zone out. And this was bizarre. This wasn't the, the normal behavior for this baby. So she took the baby to her medical doctor and the medical doctor, the pediatrician said, this is, this is not good, we need further testing and then referred her to a pediatric neurologist. And uh, after talking with this neurologist, and, and the neurologist actually asked her, what's changed for this baby's life? What's, what's been different? And she said, the only thing that's different is we're out in the sun, and I've been using a ton of sunscreen. Which made mom start doing a whole lot of research on what she's putting on baby. And lo and behold, she found that there were some carcinogens in this brand that she was using in a lot of brands actually, we're gonna talk about that, that can potentially cause what the neurologist told her her daughter was having, petite seizures. Not the grandma seizures, but the petite seizures. So that is why we're doing this workshop, mm -hmm. is to make you aware of what you're putting on your skin, uh, because everything that you put on your skin, your brand new baby skin, is getting into their body. So. Yeah, and, and that's pretty scary. We think that we're trying to do something good. We're trying to do something protective. This thing that we do, we think is going to help prevent um, injury, help prevent damage to the skin, help prevent uh, cancer rates, um, and then help prevent aging of the skin. And we think that we're doing all this good, and then to come to find out that we're actually affecting the nervous system. It's being absorbed through the skin, getting into the bloodstream, and actually causing dysfunctions in the neural connections in your brain, causing these petite mal seizures, which is very, very crazy. scary. Very crazy. Very scary. So let's talk about SPF to start off with. Uh, SPF is uh, the sun protection factor, is what that means, really. And what I found out, looking a little deeper into this, is that the number, the SPF number, actually is the amount of time it would take for you to get a sunburn if you weren't wearing any sunscreen. So that's that's kind of an interesting fact mm -hmm. there. Um, in the uh, American College of Dermatology, they recommend 30 SPF or higher with that. So they don't, they don't even recommend you going any lower than that. So that means that you could, you could put on the sunscreen and be out in the sun for 30 minutes before you started to get a sunburn. Yeah, and your SPF level primarily protects you from the UVB rays. There are two different rays, there's UVA and UVB. The UVA causes wrinkled skin, you know, damages your skin. It's the premature aging effect that we see with that. Uh, the UVB also damages the skin, but this is the really severe one that causes the skin cancer. 
and gives you the sunburn as well. Both of them, as Dr. Brian said, do contribute to the skin cancer. So that's why when you're, when you're purchasing and looking for sunscreen, you wanna make sure that it is broad spectrum. That is ideal because it is protecting you from both UVA and UVB rays, which is protecting you from skin cancer. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we also don't think about is driving in our car. Um, I know when I went to school down in Florida, um, everybody had tint on their windows so the sun couldn't come in and, and heat it up. But around here, especially in North Carolina, there's, a, there's you can't have a whole lot of tint on your window. So the sun can still get through your windows. Well, you're still getting sunburn. You're still getting skin damage. Your, the glass pane is only going to block one of those UV rays. Um, so you're still getting skin damage and you're still getting increasing your risk of developing skin cancers, even if you're not wearing sunscreen or protect, protective devices inside your car. This is why skin cancer is the most common kind of cancer. One in five Americans actually develop skin cancer, which is a lot, is a lot. So the UVA, the UVA rays, they actually get into the skin and it damages the DNA of your skin cells. And that's when you damage DNA, this, this will cause cancer. And what reports and studies are showing is it's not just that one time that you get sunburn, it's frequent. People that have had frequent sunburns time after time after time again, specifically during childhood, are more susceptible mm -hmm. to this type of cancer. It, it's this accumulative effect. So the sunscreen not only prevents sunburns, but it reduces your risk of getting, developing skin cancer, and then it decreases your early aging of your skin. Yeah, and this is one of the things that, uh, the reason why we want to use sunscreen is because of all of this, right? We don't want to age our skin, uh, we, we, we don't want cancer. So, I don't want to age my skin, I want to stay young forever. Yeah, and you know what, I'm, I'm guilty of this. I'm Italian and um, part Italian. And I have this you olive You with skin. Crisco oil, don't you? I did. When I was yeah. a kid, I did do that. Um, I remember one time we, we uh, cut school and we got on the roof don't of our garage. That. I know my mom's probably watching this. And um, we, used, we used Crisco oil or vegetable oil or something like that. Yeah, it was crazy. But, um, but even if you have olive skin, dark skin, uh, you still need to be aware of sunburn and damaging your skin. So just because you, you know, you're blessed with that beautiful skin, um, you still need to wear sunscreen. So some of the things that you want to look for in your ingredients that the mama in the beginning, the story we were telling you about, um, are going to be the oxobenzenes and the oxtisolate. Hard to pronounce. We'll put these words, we'll drop yeah. these words in the in the uh, comment section. It, it, if you look on the back of the sunscreen and you can't pronounce a lot of these words, you should probably look them up and probably know that they might not be safe for you. Um, because this particular story that we told with the mom, she was actually using a brand of what was you know being marketed as baby organic sunscreen. Um, and there's two ingredients that the FDA recognizes as generally safe and effective. Um, and that's zinc oxide, which is what we're going to use in our sunscreen, and titanium dioxide. Um, but there's a third chemical or ingredient that was in this sunscreen, um, which I can't pronounce the, uh, what was it again? The octobenzone? Yeah. Um, that was actually being absorbed through the bloodstream and causing her six-month-old to have seizures. Right. So... This is why natural sunscreen is definitely the sunscreen of choice because first of all, you can make it yourself so you know what's in it and it's going to be free of parabens, of all of these oxybenzones and octosylates and these chemicals that we know are carcinogens that have negative side effects. In fact, I have a study and I'll, I'll put the link to, to this study so you can check it out yourself um, in the comments section but um, it was published in the Journal of Cosmetology Dermatology, February 2018, and they looked at the oxobenzone, which is what is in um, most sunscreens, and the CDC uh, found that these chemicals, they demonstrated that approximately 97% of the people tested with oxybenzone, they have it present in their urine, and they're finding that 
this chemical, it's not being filtered out of our water system. So it's getting into our water system, we're drinking it, we're finding fish have it as well. So now we're eating foods that have these chemicals in that. And further research is showing that these oxybenzones, they're neurotoxins, they affect your uh, nervous system, but they also affect your endocrine glands and can affect you hormonally as well. Yeah, not, not only that, do they also affect your GI tract as well. So we can, you can develop things like ulcerative colitis, you can develop irritable bowel syndrome, you can de develop a lot of constipation or diarrhea just from constantly ingesting this or having this in the water supply. Yes, so this is why, especially for a newborn baby, um, let's, let's talk about making um, natural sunscreen because this is definitely way healthier for you so you're not putting this stuff into your body. Um, one thing to note about natural sunscreen is that it's not waterproof, at least the one we're gonna give you recipes for today. So you have to reapply it, you know, if you get out of the water, reapply it right away, and just in general, reapply it every... Couple, every, every two hours at two least. Hours. Um, the other thing that we want to put like a disclaimer on is that when companies make sunscreen, they have chemists, these people with chemistry degrees, and it takes several years to a decade or more to develop sunscreen, so they know what's in it and they know the SPF factor. When you have homemade sunscreen, there's no guarantee that you're gonna get the high enough SPF factor that the Dermatology Association um, recommends. So just being aware that this homemade sunscreen, even, even sunscreen that you buy in the store, I mean, you, you, can, you really never know. Um, it's not the end all be all. So practicing safe um, sun tips, safe sun exposure. Be in the shade whenever you can. Don't spend more than you know 30 minutes to an hour in direct sunlight. Um, any time that your skin's exposed, put sunscreen on or wear sun protective clothing. Um, I have a sun hat and I have a sun shirt. And when I was in, when we were on our honeymoon in Hawaii, I wore that all day, every day, and that really, really helped protect me from getting massive sunburns. I burn really easily. Um, so just kind of following these easy, simple guidelines can help reduce your risk of skin cancer and premature aging of the skin. And ladies, wear foundation that has broad spectrum SPF in it. I put mine on today. What about and, me? Or, and men, if you want to wear okay. foundation. You, you can, you can. So um, yes, uh, mine has SPF 15 in it and broad spectrum, so it's protecting me from the um, UVAs and the UVBs, and it's natural. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, yeah, so those are some great tips. Um, so let's talk about how we make natural sunscreen. What you will need is a medium pot and a stove or something to warm this up. You will need some coconut oil, some zinc oxide, aloe vera gel, at least 50% training. Zinc oxide? Mm -hmm. uh, that might be back, that looks backwards to me. And yes. then aloe, we have our shea butter, and then for just a little extra SPF protection, and, and to make it smell a little bit better, um, we went with raspberry oil with this. And we'll post a link to other kinds of oils that you can uh, put in it that are gonna kind of help to increase that SPF factor and just make it smell a little bit better. Definitely. So, um, how you do this mm -hmm. is, first So you're, you're gonna take that. Uh, I actually made some last night. So I had a chemistry experiment in my house. So I made uh, a bazillion pounds of natural sunscreen that I have that I can use for probably the next five years now. <laughs> um, so I took a saucepan and what I did was I put the coconut oil and I put the shea butter in it and I melted that down to it was because uh, it, it's room to it Let's talk about specifics how much oh so we did a quarter I did a quarter cup of coconut oil and then I did a what, I, what did I do I did a full cup of shea butter um, and then I did 25 drops of the raspberry seed oil and I just melted I melted all this oils together and you don't have to crank the heat up high it's, it's gonna melt really really easy and really really effectively and then I stirred it up I took it off the heat I let it cool down just a little bit and then I put in a half cup of uh, aloe vera 50% um, or higher uh, purity for the aloe vera um, that just gives it kind of like a, um, a, a gel type consistency with that. When I put that in there, it was still a little bit warm, so the aloe vera kind of melted. I stirred it up again, and then I let it cool completely. I let it cool almost to the point where the oil started to solidify at room temperature. 
right? And that's when I added in the zinc oxide. And I added in two tablespoons of the zinc oxide. Um, and I just stirred that in. So the mistake that I made was I did not let it cool enough and I kept adding in zinc oxide and I kept adding in because I wanted to make this like little creamy gel that you like think of normal sunscreen. Um, but when I actually let it dry and harden for several hours, um, it turned into a very, very thick type gel. So it's, it's like, a, it's almost like a cream, like a fountain, like you would call it like a lotion type cream with this. Um, and it spreads really, really well. This type of sunscreen is also known as um, like a physical type sunscreen or a physical shield. So it's the zinc oxide, it's going to have that white kind of tint to it. And this does two things. Um, the main thing that it's going to do is when the sun rays hit the skin, the zinc oxide is going to deflect the rays out. So it's not going to allow your body to absorb uh, the rays into your skin. When you absorb too many rays, that's when you get the, the DNA, the, the damage. damage on the DNA and cellular level. I read that, that, I read that the, um, the chemical reaction that happens when the zinc oxide and the coconut oil and everything, it, it hits, uh, when, the, when the rays hit it, it actually yeah, takes the energy from the UV rays and disperses it and turns it into heat. And you know, yes, it may change the temperature of your skin and and deflect it. But I thought that was kind of cool. Like how cool that you can take something natural and it can shield you from these damaging rays mm -hmm. in such a way. One of the uh, um, kind of analogies with that is the sun shield that we put in our windshield in our car when we drive away. It's that reflective paneling where the sun hits it, then it bounces off. It's the exact same concept with our skin with that. And so you can, I rubbed it in on mine and you can see, you, can, you might be able to see that it's still kind of there. It's still a little bit white, um, but my body's not, my body's going to absorb a lot less of this than if we had the other type of sunscreen, which the other type of sunscreen is the chemical sunscreen, like the spray on where um, you, you spray it in, then your skin absorbs it. What that does is when the sun hits your skin and it absorbs the UV light, the chemical, uh, the chemicals that you put on your skin are going to take the UV light and help disperse them, break them down, and disperse them, so they protect the cells and they protect the DNA from actually getting damaged. Very cool. You can also make a spray as well with the same stuff. You need some almond oil, a glass bottle, and you can put this in there and, and turn it into mm -hmm. a spray, which is which is nice. And it won't make your because the worst part about putting on sunscreen is that you have to wash your hands afterwards. Because I hate that like grimy feeling on yeah, your hands. It's a little oily too, yeah. but. Um, hey, it's a natural way to protect yourself. So um, we hope that you found this useful today and you now have a recipe for making easy, simple, natural, healthy sunscreen because the bottom tan line is that sunscreen can be very harmful to your body, your health, and we want everything health for you. I'd rather be pale with good skin than tan and wrinkly. Exactly, exactly. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.